It's the 5th of June 2021 and you're watching The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Hey, we're back. I'm Chris Marquardt. There's Jeremiah Chechik and Imar King. Hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Say, say something, please. You said we watching. Are... You said watching. You're the listening to. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm. <gasps> ah, yeah. We're sliding yeah. towards I'm YouTube. Sure. Sliding towards YouTube. No, mm. not really. <laughs> but, but today, maybe it makes sense to watch because we are talking. Moving pictures. Mm. I'm, I'm not say, I'm not saying the term just yet because we have to have a little discussion about that. Um, um, uh, Adrian is not here. Adrian is uh, busy today, so we it's just the three of us. But um, that'll be just fine. So today we want to talk about an invention. Well, it goes back to 1987. Steve Wilhite invented it. It is a image format. Well, it originated as an image format, um, and it is spelled G-I-F. How is it pronounced? GIF. 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 Well, hey, we, we GIF agree. Yeah. It's a GIF, yeah. right? It's a GIF. Because no. the, the first word is graphic. Which is well, if you, ask, if you ask Stephen mm -hmm. Will, uh, Steve Wilhite, the inventor, he says publicly said he thinks it should be pronounced GIF. <gasps> yeah, but what does he know? Yeah, what? <laughs> GIF, GIF for people of a certain age in a certain part of the world was like a cleaning product that you yeah. clean yes, your, it's true, it's which is true. now called SIF for some reason. Is it? Yeah. Interesting. I have no idea why the I'm J sure was it's offensive. Non toxic, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> said ironically. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so, Mr. Wilhite uh, came up with this uh, little format. Let's just briefly go over the history and the tech about it. Uh, it uh, showed up for the first time, it was supported by CompuServe, who was old enough to remember CompuServe. The w ah, may I just interject? Oh. Mm -hmm. CompuServe bought the source. The source was the very first consumer to internet uh, social platform. Oh. So yes, I remember it. And I still have my box floppy disks <laughs> as a as a uh, icon of days gone by. Interesting. Anyway, interesting. Yeah. CompuServe. So, yes. So anyway, CompuServe um, was was this this combination, a bit like AOL. They had uh, the access to the internet and then they had their own platform running on the internet for people to have email and stuff. Um, and they supported GIFs which are moving pictures, small moving kind of things. They started out as little stamp sized things and then they became bigger. Um, technically speaking, it was the first, um, the first internet ready video format. Let's put it this way, because um, the Netscape Navigator, again, one of the old first uh, internet browsers, 1995 was the first internet browser to allow GIFs to loop. So you could have a GIF on a web page. And we do remember these little, like, animated things, little animated annoyances, like spinning <laughs> envelopes and blinking under construction signs on web pages. <laughs> We've all seen them. We all love to. And hate sort them. of bad animation, also. Was but it's an animation. Weird. So, so yeah. they the gifs started off as little tiny things that would loop, so they could have. 10 frames, 15 frames, 20 frames, and they would loop and do something repeatedly. And uh, it kind of took a while for for them to become a bit less relevant, technically relevant, because it took until 2014, until HTML5, that would then support native video in web browsers. Believe it or not, until then, the GIF was the only thing to... to Put an animation on a web page that would play everywhere, would be visible everywhere, and uh, and Facebook took until 2015 to add support for GIFs. Instagram in 2018, Apple took a while. I don't know exactly when they started supporting GIFs, but you can now put them in photos, in messages, and things, and they will just play, and you can see them move. But that mm. didn't work for the longest time. So, um, it's interesting, if anybody's tried to kind of compare a file size of a video with the file size of a GIF, 
they would be shocked to know that it's the gift huge. is so much bigger. <laughs> well, and you think, well, the yeah. the reason is the is the way that that video on the on the web is compressed, and uh, GIF isn't really what we're talking about. Is like a whole bunch of discrete pictures. They, by the way, they share. Again, we're very technical here for a moment, but they <laughs> they share a color palette. So you can in a in a, in a classic GIF you can have two hundred fifty six colors. That's it for the entire video. So mm -hmm. if you if you have a lot of changes in there, you'll have to, or the software has to kind of smash it down into fewer colors to it, to make it fit. But which again, let's leave the <clears throat> the tech behind us because the GIF has changed. The GIF is now. I'd say the term GIF has di has diluted into uh, into including everything that you put on a web page that moves. Is that fair? Yes, it it is, and certainly in the NFT world, um, <laughs> GIFs are a deliverable. Um, you know, they are a deliverable, and yes, people are. are using them. Um, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about them. I, I I've had interesting success but i always find that the file size relative to the deliverable in other words the outcome has never really been that satisfying relative to video on yeah. the other hand the loopability of it with a smaller file if you, one could find the right subject uh is very very um friendly for a lot of different uh, right. under you know uh, foundational software programs, so it has its its use, and I think it it is not going to go away. Any, no, no, soon. definitely not. I think it's being improved and it, worked on. Even though we now call things gifts that are not technically speaking gifts, as I just explained them there. If you go to websites like Imager or Giphy Cat, uh, they will have yeah. things that, if you look under the hood, are actually videos <laughs> and not GIFs. Yeah. But they loop. Yeah. And that's kind of the definition mm. today of a GIF, I would say. It's a small piece of video that that loops, loops. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. On the other hand, if you want it on your own computer and you're playing it through something like QuickTime, you could just hit loop <laughs> just yeah. repeat there it, it, goes. it yeah. definitely yeah. just there is a uh, there you know you file view loop right, <laughs> right. and um, and then for for the longest time i mean that those gifs were yeah i'd say um just just an interesting how do you say this an interesting way to put some animation on a web page but then something happened in 1996 and that was oh, this God, guy. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me <laughs> get this out of the way. I have the browser not configured, but we'll change this. Uh, For those of you listening, this is a technical problem. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting That will last technical. another few seconds. Uh, our screen on the Chris side is black and now it's alive there it is um yeah for some oh, reason I remember this. wouldn't My you have preferred if it stayed black <laughs> well <laughs> I remember this I remember that this. dancing baby what I'm there. showing is yeah the dancing baby from 1996 and um there's some discussion about it but I would think that was kind of the beginning of using the the gif format as a as a, a, a in in a more in a more meme type context, so um, this was probably one of the first things on the web that really went viral. Um, it's it's for those of you who haven't heard of it, um, maybe some of you are too young to know about it. But the dancing baby was a computer animated baby that was doing a weird sort of dance, and it really made the rounds back in 96 and it i wonder if this is a nft by this point if it's not it possible. will be in a moment <laughs> possible you know if, if they did like a dancing baby reboot now and with the kind of uh technology the animation software that's you know just to see the difference well as a matter of fact <laughs> it may Chris not is, look quite so Chris is, grotesque 
Chris's uh, uh, pick of the week is going to go into that. Oh yeah, okay. oh yeah. yeah. So so anyway, yeah. here's mm-hmm. here's a little website. We'll link that, which has like a history, a brief history of the dancing baby meme because it really <laughs> spawned a whole lot of things. It went into Simpsons, uh, dancing <laughs> Jesus, and. Uh, uh, guitar playing babies, roller skating babies, all kind of referencing um, the dancing baby, which again, oops, uh, pressing the wrong buttons here. It's not my day. Um, so yeah, the, it was kind of a classic that, that started this whole GIF as a meme kind of thing. And I think we all have by this point used a GIF to react to something or to uh, to express an emotion in a text message, or I mean, let's let's just open Giphy Cat here, which again is a website that is one of those big collection pots, and here are popular <laughs> gifs about mm-hmm. all sorts of things, and uh, you can it, it integrates into various operating systems and messaging systems, so you could um, answer. Uh, a question by someone with an affirmative, someone given a thumbs up or something, for example. And it built- is our uh, on our Apple um, messaging when we do an avatar of ourselves that that is animated. Um, oh yeah, I suspect those are gifts. Uh, possible. I haven't you- looked into the tech of those, but um, it's clearly possible. That's a gift yeah, under the hood. Yeah, mm-hmm. and when you message, you can also send gifts. I believe. Oh yeah, yeah you can. You can. can yeah. You can just yeah. add, so, uh, include a GIF. Well, mm-hmm. there's the images hashtag images or image uh, program, which is bu- by Apple, which which taps into sites like uh, Giphy Cat and um, mm-hmm. and pulls gifts, reaction gifts, and stuff. So it has really now, become what, a cultural phenomenon. What does uh, the progression of GIF technology? Uh, due to the future of photography. In other words, will we see a setting on a phone, just like video, well, that will effectively deliver us a somewhat compressed GIF? It's already there. It's already built into your iPhone. Mm. You haven't just you have, just haven't found it yet. Um, if you oh, haven't. <laughs> take a picture with, again, I can only speak for, for Apple here because that's what yeah. I use, but if you uh, take a picture with uh, Live View enabled... There's this, uh, mm. mm-hmm. it, it, it shoots mm-hmm. a short video. And then That's if yeah. you swipe up on that picture and tap on loop, it'll create a loop for you. Loop. This is something I learned from Adrian. Thank you, Adrian, mm-hmm. in your absence. Um, <laughs> uh, I learned all about finding your uh, moment in live video as well. As and, if you, kind of- and if you take that loop and you export it to... Um, I suppose, to something like Twitter, and you share it, then uh, Twitter doesn't know the live view format, so it has to convert it to something that does loop, and that is a video, <laughs> and that is a GIF. So under the hood, it creates a GIF for you. Mm-hmm. It's already built There in. you go. So those of you who mm-hmm. want instant creative control over GIFs, just use Live Photo on your iPhone and send it up, and you'll have already created it. Mm-hmm. Right. So one thing sort of. that... One thing that we have um, done here on the show is that we, of course, we've given us each other or ourselves a little, a little homework, a little bit of homework, <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> we decided to make that a cinemagraph. Now, what is a cinemagraph, Imar? Good question, because I, I really <laughs> couldn't get a very definitive answer. Well, I didn't. So I'm not even sure if mine fits the bill or not. Is it too long or is I don't know. Uh, well, for, I thought from, five, five seconds. I needed the loop to let the action happen. So, <laughs> you know, so, I needed it to be that long. So is that still a GIF or is it now too long? Is well, it just it, a looped it, video? So, so give, I did found a, a place that where I could upload a video and convert it to a GIF, which is probably just the way to make it loop, because which, I couldn't figure out. Which you're right. The GIF, the GIF is kind of the just a delivery yeah. mechanism for something like mm. a, a cinemagraph, right? 
Mm-hmm. So um, if you look at uh, Wikipedia, which I, of course, did because I'm a nerd. So a bit of the image is moving. <laughs> but what, how does that make it different from a GIF? Or they're not the same thing? The GIF is just a, a way to make it loop uh, and show it. Mm. But the cinemagraph is, is the kind image. of this, this image that is, yeah. is static, but has like one little part of it moving, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. a faucet dripping or... A blade yeah. of grass moving in the or wind. A bird and the rest. flying across the sky. It's all often used, for example, with uh, a still image where everything is is frozen mm. except the wind is blowing the yeah. hair of the or sun. smoke exactly. or something. That, that yeah. would be the classic mm. um, cinema graph. Steam in your coffee demo. cup. Exactly. So, so lots of yeah. <laughs> lots of cliched things that we have seen mm-hmm. over and over yes. again, and it was, I think, sometime maybe so, maybe about ten years ago, it was one of these hip in things, and now it's um, it's been more more of a commodity because you have now you have software apps on your phone where you can easily make one by just taking a a photo, a live photo or a bit of video and then defining which part you can paint on it and say, mm-hmm. this is the part that moves and this is the part that's, that doesn't move. So, I mean, personally, mm-hmm. in my, uh, my attempt to create a interesting cinemagraph, and I did attempt, um, I failed miserably. I almost uh, failed. <laughs> I, 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 everything, I, I, I shot ducks in a pond where I really tried to have the water moving, yeah. but the ducks mm-hmm. frozen, uh-huh. that failed. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I, I tried to get You should have just got like a rubber ducky and put him on the pond. Then. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of hard. <laughs> um, so um, I ended up, as you will eventually see, creating um, <laughs> the impression of a GIF, I mean of a cinemagraph, but using completely digital tools, which Chris is going to. Be I'll, I'll rip this into. I'll rip this to shreds <laughs> for sure. Um, so uh, here's here's our uh, cinema. I'm putting air quotes here. Cinema graph. Um, that we. Let's look at yours first. Let's look at mine first. That is totally fine. So what I've done is I've uh, taken uh-huh. a piece of software that is called PicoCam, and what that does is it allows you to define it, it you take a picture with it and you define which of which part of the picture should be moving you have a circle that you can move around and resize and uh, I just I put a bowl of water on the table and with one wet hand I dripped into it and uh, it this is a very simple app it gives you like five seconds and that's all you get so um, it's pretty shoddy because it like, kind of abruptly ends so you get this weird jarring little jerk in the middle when it's when it loops um but i'd say it here's, does count as a cinemagraph doesn't it this, here's the thing uh, this could I, I, easily I, have know. been a video because you're shooting mm-hmm. the video and you're seeing water drop and the table is not moving um i i think if you had for example someone or, or an animal leaping off the table, <laughs> frozen in mid-flight, and the water dripping, that would be mm. what a cinemagraph yes. could achieve visually. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, I'd like to challenge your composition choice, <laughs> actually. Are you... Are you uh, I can see a much more interesting picture in that. By just are you implying that I did any sort of composition there? <laughs> <laughs> I, I seriously well I, I don't know like did you not want to did you I don't know what were you thinking <laughs> I just don't know hmm. I'm not sure did you I not did. think it would be a good idea to make it visually interesting for the rest of us <laughs> mm, just just uh, I mean my, my, my first my first goal with this was to create something where, where one part moves and the rest but if, doesn't. But if you had um, if you had sort of less of the table and even a cropped and more cropped, you would have had um, more scope to play around with the movement of the water part because you just you wouldn't have been so far away from it. If you, you, haven't, you haven't you haven't used the Pico me? you haven't used the Pico app. So Pico can, no. try, try it out. Is that then, a free one? Yes, it is. Yeah, see, there you go. For those of you listening... uh, (laughs) I found it very hard to do anything without dropping a couple of euros. 
<laughs> for those of you listening, we are looking at a table with a stainless steel bowl on it uh, in a room with some water dripping into the bowl very subtly. Yeah, but it's you, a deliberate accident. You're both you're both right. Um, I, I'd say, I'd say for 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 the for the classic definition of what a cinema graph is, I think I still take the crown here because let's let's move on to. Um, <laughs> Let's move on to one of Jeremiah's, because what what we're looking at here is okay. I have to press play here. Is a, a digital <laughs> composition of some shape that has a ball shape inside, and the ball is slowly rotating. That's what I see. <laughs> yeah. very, is, that, very is that a fair slowly. description? Colorful. That is a f yes. It's a fair description of what you're seeing. Uh, it looks. Uh, on first viewing, like just an abstract uh, painting, if you will, digital painting. But on uh, slightly uh, longer viewing, you could see at the very center, there is movement within it. And it's very, very subtle. And very uh, subtle. It, 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 it clearly, absolutely clearly fails the definition of a cinema <laughs> because it's not a photo. It is a digital no, it, creation. No, it... it, it, it it is Was not it a difficult to make? Uh, not when you <laughs> have employed the techniques that one has learned to use, no. I mean, it's okay. It, it, difficulty. I mean, maybe a couple of years ago, this would have seemed daunting to me, but mm -hmm. uh, the pandemic has forced me into a, a learning curve <laughs> of certain techniques that I have managed, I'm not going to say to master, but to certainly use. And um, mm -hmm. this is an example. Uh, but I was trying to convey... Um, and I do. I think I have another one in that. Oh yeah, the, the there's next a, one. There's a second is, one of yours. Yeah, which again is uh, a digital composition. It looks a bit like a, a space type of scene yeah. with a yeah, yeah. with a lens flare yeah. and some some Pre and a kaleidoscopic some, type yeah, some, action. Exactly. Pre press, play, press, oh, play. press play. Press mm play. -hmm. It's not a GIF. I have to press play. And some some circuit board type thing on the bottom and some. So yeah, if you look at it uh, instantly, it looks has like a fractal a kind of thing painting. going on at the top yeah. there. Uh, but the the top is moving slightly, and and mm -hmm. if you look into the light beams, you'll see that oh, they're yeah, active yeah. as well. Mm. Um, again, uh, this is not technically <laughs> a cinemagraph, <laughs> but it is an impression of a cinemagraph. And if, if I was in this particular <laughs> environment and you said, make a cinemagraph, and I took a picture <laughs> and used those, <laughs> those applications, this is what we would see. I did not loop it for other reasons. Okay. But I could have. Mm. <laughs> I could have if I wanted to. Um, and Imar, <laughs> you gave us this one, yes. which I is automatically looping. I don't have to press play. I just want to mention that. Yeah, uh, I found this app called Vimage, V-I-M-A-G-E. Vimage. And yeah, Vimage. So, so that's video and image squished together. Uh -huh. is, I think um, this is uh, this is very good. I, so, know, so we, we're looking at a at a crow Don't. or a raven sitting on top of a what yeah. is that a fence post, and then there's uh, these mathematical cross. equations drifting into the picture. Yeah, I do I just thought that looked kind of cool, even though it makes absolutely zero sense. It doesn't. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, so that's why I did. I made the second one. Um, I had to spend some money to, I think like it remembered I was in there and I made a free one and then it wouldn't let me export again. Uh -huh. So uh, obviously I explored it a bit more and I had to pay, I had to pay for a month to. So um, here, here we're seeing on the second one, we're seeing another crow sitting on top of an Irish cross on an Irish cemetery. And there's a, another bird flying through the sky and all very grungy textures and black and white and has a bit of a, a bit of an old movie type of uh, thing going on with like artifacts from a projector or something. So there's tons of overlays and things and you can do stuff with text and everything in there. It's just, there's a lot in it, but you need to pay for it to get the... I'd say this is I, I, probably more of a cinemagraph than all of the other photos, though. Yeah, I, I, I would say so, yeah. I, I tried to actually make the sky move, but my big chubby fingers <laughs> well <laughs> i think it, i think, working very well i think the I fact that the sky is not moving 
uh, really nails the cinemagraph quality of it. Okay, okay, okay. The, the next question I have is, how do you guys feel about this particular technique or technology, depending on how you're coming from it, is a valid or viable or interesting or growing uh, technique in the expression of the photographic art? Well, it is certainly, or it has certainly for the longest time now, uh, blurred the boundary between photo and video. I think that's one of the biggest achievements there that that we mm. <clears throat> that we now use these short looping things for communication for entertainment for um and and in contexts where we wouldn't typically have video but more uh stills do you think that the this blurring between uh call, call it the photographic process which we can kind of in quotation marks mark as reality and uh, the addition of whether it's a, uh, a a digital technique overlaid or or digital um, forms overlaid to combine that is is yielding uh, a new form of expression uh, yes or <laughs> yes uh, yeah. it, it seems so I, I I think it's quite um, in fact, I'm going to, if I can, let me, let me send the picture for you to put up, which um, in the meantime, not, while you progress. send it, I have actually looked into my GIF folder and um, brought a few up that I have lying around. So here's our oh, future fantastic. photography logo, our little robot, which is oh, animated. Look. So it, it tilts its head that. and blinks its eye. Mm. Um so if any, anyone wants to get a hold of that, I'd be happy oh, yeah. to share. Yeah. Um, here, here's, here's one that I recently used to tell someone that my router is broken. So it's a blinking LED on my router. Um, <clears throat> then this, is, this was from this morning, which again is a GIF of, a, of, of rain on our oh, yeah. porch. Um, this one is kind of one of uh, my favorites right now. <clears throat> <laughs> Because I don't know, it's just it's just a very happy sheep um, that I came across recently. If I wanna if I wanna express that I'm really I'm really kind of happy about something, I might use this one, which is a little girl dancing. I like her to bits. Um, and then this one I recently made. That's me. This is this is by this is made from a from an app called Gif Gap. If you okay. get, get, go Love get it. GIF Gap, you can put your face into little animations and things. It's fun. Oh, my God. My daughter would love that now. It's a ton of fun. She's 11, on the other hand. <laughs> and the moment, the moment I have my second vaccine shot, I will certainly do this. <laughs> go for it. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, so, uh, someone recently posted this in that exact context. It's like, okay, I got my, I, I'm vaccinated now, and this is a little girl in a uh, in a in a, in a mm -hmm. amusement park sort of setting, and she's licking the railing, which of course I wouldn't do, but <laughs> I think it makes a perfectly fine <laughs> gift to to uh, to convey the idea of I'm invincible now because I have my vaccine. So. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you wanted to send a picture, Jeremiah? Where did you send it? I sent. I sent it to your email. The, oh, email that. Yeah, uh, because it's not really. It's a work in progress, so we can just talk about that as such. I didn't want to put it up there permanently until I finish it, but it is an indication of that hybridization of <clears throat> digital. And um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Center reduced. Yeah. So we are looking at uh, an empty parking lot in a place that has palm trees, probably Southern California. And uh, there's a shadow of a palm tree and some overhanging um, power lines and things. And then there's a, a woman standing there with, our, with her back to us. That's right. Is and that if, supposed if to move? No, no. No. It, it isn't. But but it's it's a hybridization, um, and if you zoom in, 
you will see a few things that the this woman. Is, let me let me try to zoom. Woman, or there you go. You can see that she is floating. That's that's what I was just about to say. She looks floating. Yeah, she's floating above the pavement, um, and. Uh, when it's done, you won't be able to tell. Like right now, you can see the 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 elements of digital figures yes. here, but soon um, I'm confident and I will be able to work through this and make it very very real. And part of it is because the picture is kind of expressed in a more Kodachrome, contrasty ah. uh, view, and and she's not been. But it's not it's not a gif it uh, doesn't have any anima uh, any no, no, animated no an uh, elements towards uh, to it. No, though I could add that with a little more work some animated <laughs> elements. But I just thought uh there is an interesting hybridization of digital and uh photography that Absolutely. is that's emerging and very very exciting I think in terms of of do we call it painting do we call it photography I mean what do you know, if we had to put something uh, in a kind of context that people would understand, like a GIF, cinemagraph, whatever, I call it sort of a hybridization or um, generative hybrid, something like that. So part of it is generative out of, you know, uh, all manner of systems. And the other is lens-based. And how those come together is a very interesting process. So speaking, uh, going back to the GIFs and the anim animation aspect there, I think the question, we've already kind of answered the question, what does that mean for the future of photography? We're seeing, a, to use your term, hybridization of still photos and videos in some way. And we've seen those for, yeah, for a, a couple of decades oh, wow. now. Um and they and they are they are changing though in their meaning and they are bringing w new ways to communicate with with um, to communicate ideas in the form of memes that can if, you know if, you know what we say a picture says more than a thousand words I would mm. say a gif says more than a thousand pictures in some contexts so yeah. yes I mean I could imagine a family portrait for example. Yeah. Uh, that is normally people frozen staring at the camera, but with one of the figures, let's say a little kid, just screaming and crying. Why not? Why not? That would tell you a lot more than that frozen moment about Absolutely. what's going on in the, you know, and um, so I've not seen anything like that, but I, I, I would imagine that there are interesting developments in terms of uh, applications. Um, I haven't found one that I felt was very uh, user friendly yet. Maybe that's a business um, idea. Personally. Maybe that's uh, something to be to become rich by. Maybe well, possibly. Mm. Anyway, or just eat up a lot of time. <laughs> I think so. Um, let's look at our picks of the week, and I think all of them are somewhat related to. The topic today, um, let's start with Imar. You sent us a video, yes. not a GIF, but a video. A, a video, a, a TED talk by this uh, young woman here, Julie, can't remember her Logan. second name. I never heard of this lady before. She's a 20-something squillionaire by the sound of her. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, according to her, she's the reason why we are all using... Um, gifts now because she created this app originally called Nutmeg which um, I think came out of like a breakup or something that somebody broke up with her by text and you know the kind of miscommunications of text messages and it's like as if her take on the whole thing is that gifts illustrate the conversation more and that um, we should all be talking in gifts. Well, that's interesting. I think the Egyptians did that uh, 6,000 years ago. Yeah. Well, they did. Yeah. Yeah. They absolutely yeah. did. Um, yeah. There is, uh, in the uh, ancient e Egyptian language, uh, those who've studied it, of which I am not mm -hmm. one, but I have read about it, where there were actual words and sounds that would 
uh, describe a, an emotion or a thing or a space or a feeling that they, in the word itself, said cannot be communicated by picture. Mm -hmm. So most of the language, most of the linguistics had a, a correlation of effectively an icon. That's how they communicated. And there were sounds associated with, of course, the sounds, we don't know what they were, but they do know that there were sounds that weren't related to the hieroglyph. Uh, and they had built into that sound a way of saying there is no, <laughs> there's yeah, yeah. no picture, no picture associated with this. There's, um, I, I thought it was nuts, first of all, and then I thought about it and realized that my daughter has uh, give conversations with me all the time. It, it um, is very you know, information sure. rich, very dense yeah. in terms of information. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I think Apple has been leading the charge uh, in terms of keeping their hieroglyphs updated <laughs> and interesting. It's, and it's actually... There's one gift that I never get tired of seeing, and I, it's probably from a show, I, I don't know, but it's a girl spitting out her coffee. And it's like the kind of, what? reaction. <laughs> and it, every single time, it, it gets a giggle out of me. So there's some golden, like, sometimes only a gif will do. <laughs> what about a smiley face? <laughs> smiley faces. There's that's that's an original <laughs> sort of American or universal hieroglyph, yeah, shall we say? Yeah. True. Um, yeah. So back I to did see a, sorry, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I did see an interesting work, uh, digital work that took a three dimensional smiley face and used the lines to create all the emotions of every smiley face from sad to neutral mm -hmm. to happy to. Are we, are we allowed to call it a smiley moment. face when it's not smiling? No, that, we're not allowed to. No, not we're not really. allowed is it to. An emoji. You then? can be ticketed for that. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's move on uh, back to animation, and uh, this is one that I found uh, just today, and uh, it's probably more in Jeremiah's ballpark. It is uh, a proposal it comes out of Facebook AI, and uh, well, Facebook kind of scares me, and this scares <laughs> me too. We're talking about neural actors, which is. Mm. A synthesized actors and their motions, and uh, there's there's examples here um, where they I think have like a, a a motion capture, but it's not a motion capture like in a, in an expensive motion capture suite or suit, but it's more of a point of camera added, and it captures the motion, and then you can create um, you you can you can imprint that motion onto virtual actors. And uh, you can like change parameters as like how tall is that person or how uh, how big is that person, and it looks very natural. So, is it's that something, Jeremiah? That, gaming, that, that isn't it? yeah. Uh, the uh, question uh, is, Jeremiah, are you going to use something like that as like extras in a in a scene somewhere in the background? Uh, mm -hmm. The quick answer is absolutely. Um, in in fact, uh, on a particular project that I am working on. Um, and, and kind of going back and forth uh, on budget considerations. Uh, this thing requires many, many uh, stunt people working in shadows. And so you don't really see them. They're, they're across the street, but right. they're very active. And I've been exploring with Epic uh, MetaHumans uh, right. and, and those kind of virtual humans. This for distanced people, and but I'm that not would sure perfectly how perfectly work, get, right? Absolutely, mm -hmm. because if I yeah, said, yeah. you know, I really need somebody to be dashing across the street quickly, I, I right. literally at that moment could probably just shoot someone running across the street, plug them into already a virtual human, uh, bury them in shadow. And uh, uh, of mm -hmm. course, I'm oversimplifying it because yes. this would have to be done in, mm -hmm. you know, six or eight K and integrated properly. But this is stuff that that I'm definitely all over because um, for certain things it's going to be a safer if you're doing that kind of stuff <laughs> safer more if budget working, friendly right mm -hmm. well there's that but also if you have like a crowd and a moving train oh. coming across tra you know that you can shoot a crowd you know just mm. moving away. Uh, I would from, think it's also know, quicker because you, you won't have to instruct mm. people you can just. Uh, yeah. Use a well, prefab motion of mm. sort and plug it in. 
Yeah, that's very true. I mean, I you know, uh, years ago I did a I, I did a film and, and it was I had to recreate um, the building of the railroad around 1905 uh, in in Colorado and and we, you know I was working with three thousand extras plus all in costume all spread out across a mountain site. Uh, and and the amount of organization, the That's... amount of of signaling to ads about how to direct the people I had uh, assistance That's almost been her level, garb. right? Oh the yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Saving Private Ryan, probably yeah. in my head. Well, it, 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 first of all, it's very very enjoyable as the director, less enjoyable as the producer. <laughs> but 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 you have to, the planning of it from the inside, how you manage crowds moving. Um, there's a fractalization of it. I mean, it's just, it's a fascinating thing. But with this, um, and certainly we're seeing more and more of that used in cinema. Sometimes uh, up the last 10 years, it's gotten more real. You know, years ago, we could look at it and go, well, it looks and a bit dodgy. And we suspend our disbelief. And by the way, one of the reasons that I firmly, that, that, that I, That I think uh, Facebook is going to use that is um, for virtual interaction, VR, AR interactions with people because you don't need too much information off them to recreate them in a virtual forum. So you could, mm. you could sooner mm. or later, uh, it's going to happen that you have a conversation with someone who's not in the room, but you interact with them as if they were standing right in front of you because they are virtually standing there. So Sure, I, I could see that in a place like uh, Somnium Space or Crypto Voxels and yeah, whatnot, even totally. get, making a concert. I, I know some, some musicians here who've done... They've been recorded in concert to place in the metaverse and those those places. You could build a huge crowd and and with those dynamics of real and virtual people, um, it's it's all happening. I think Facebook would be probably using it uh, to give uh, themselves applause. <laughs> Every, every possibly, every they, I mean, I mean, did. Facebook, Facebook, the owner of Oculus, so they are uh, deeply rooted yeah. already in there. Apple is within the next Alm six months. Uh, they are they are doing announcements um, for yeah. sure. There's a WWDC keynote coming up. I'm looking Soon, forward to what yeah. we'll see there. Uh, anyway, last but not least, Jeremiah, you brought us something um, that will allow you to hand someone. A gif in uh, in a physical that's form. That's right. Uh, that's right. Um, I know it. They do it with video. I'm sure They're called it's with, infinite with objects. Now, I I have given uh, I've I've given a gift of, of an NFT to a friend of mine in this with a bamboo frame, and it is fantastic. Uh, absolutely. So it, it's just a, it, it's mind blowing. It's a little video in a frame that you can put on, hang on your walls, put on a shelf, and uh, yeah. it's a I video it. playing on a little screen in that frame. Except it doesn't that. really look like a video on a screen. It really looks like an active movement of a work of art. I mean, when you when you look at it, um, and it loops, especially. It loops. <laughs> That's all it, it does. I've, that, I've eh? looked in that. It's it's not like a little television. It's it's no. really an object in itself that loops it a is. video, and that's all it does. This one video. So it's like an object. Up to uh, up to twenty four hours, I've seen. So <laughs> yes, um, I'm I'm uh, really dazzled by uh, by how well it functions. How that's good a Harry Potter looks. thing right there. Yeah, it is. Really I mean, is. what's I mean, interesting, it comes with, uh, Chris, it comes in a box. And when you put it in the box, it automatically turns off. And when you ah. lift it out, it automatically ah. turns on. Uh, it okay. takes a charge. It lasts probably a day. I mean, uh, we, 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 see, we see a picture, like a video, a little video of a cat in, in, in their ad here online on the website. I just imagine, just imagine, I, I would play pranks on people with that. Just imagine <laughs> to have, to have yeah. like, a, like a three hour still frame of the cat and once every 35 <laughs> minutes it, 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 turns it turns its head. head. It turns its head and then turns back again. I mean, that would be wild. You'd get, you'd get, a, you'd get a very panicked phone call by your mother <laughs> saying, it moved, it moved. Help. 
<laughs> but, but by the way, to that end, there is a uh, NFT marketplace called A slash Sync, which uh, encourages artists to sell, or create, distribute uh, NFT art uh, that is uh, layer friendly. In other words, you sell the base layer, for example, you know, a couple looking out over a landscape. And the layers will change the time of day or the, you know, the head turn and whatnot. And the actual uh, user or owner of the NFT can control the layers uh, effectively, or you can program the layers to another uh, uh, a blockchain like Chainlink to take information from the web and reprogram it into the NFT so that it's dynamic as you just described. So, wow. NFTs, you ma you managed to shoehorn NFTs into these shows. <laughs> it's Always. it's amazing. Uh, well, like we didn't mention uh, your car. So, <laughs> you know, I'm it doesn't it doesn't mind bitcoins just yet. So, um, not yet. Not yet. It's working on it though. Ah, <sighs> anyway, I the think Sorry, Chris, there is a car company coming out with a way to mine Bitcoin from your car. I heard that yesterday. Um, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised, especially if you if you feed it solar electricity, that it's kind of a clean <laughs> way to do that. Anyway, that was saying. it for this episode about GIFs and animations and weird memes and uh, weird <laughs> formats. Um, We'll put all the links to everything that we talked about in the show notes. Thanks for being here. We'll be back in a week from now with another episode. Until then, everyone, take care. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Mm -hmm.